Hey TGR Nation, last week we posted uh, some photos on my Instagram and on Facebook of Jacob Pearson uh, washing some ball python eggs. We had a lot of questions that came from that, kind of uh, kind of like why do we do it, how do we do it, what's the solution we use, um, how do you set your eggs up, uh, what do you, uh, what's a good egg, what's a bad egg, this kind of thing. So we decided this morning to come in and shoot a video to show you how we set them up from the time we pull from the female through the entire egg washing process into the box into the incubator so we'll uh we'll go ahead and shoot that video and richard will edit it and make me look smarter than i actually am and we'll get it out on facebook so you guys can see what we do the reason for doing the egg washing uh is honestly we we're just trying to do something that puts a better product or a healthier animal out into the uh into the trade so by washing the eggs, what we're hoping to do is reduce the transmission of any bacteria, including salmonella, from the uh, female to the egg, the egg to the hatchling, and then again, the hatchling on to the, to the uh, end pet parent. So what we're trying to do is uh, eliminate all of that, and egg washing is a good first step in that direction. The reason that we're supposed to be posting the picture that we were posting this video is that we really hope that more people start doing this. Uh, we've been doing it for over a year now. We've not had any negative impact on our eggs. It hasn't, it hasn't negatively impacted our hatch rate at all. Um, it hasn't negatively impacted the, the babies at all. All it's done is helped us provide a, a better, healthier product uh, into the trade. And, and I hope that some of you that are watching this video will, uh, will take from it, will learn from it, maybe ask us more questions. And uh, hopefully more and more people will start doing this and it'll become more and more commonplace uh, in the trade. We, you know, we just have to keep moving the industry forward. Uh, and this is one more step in the right direction. So uh, if you have any questions after you watch the video, hit us up. Hopefully we can answer them for you. First thing we do is we find a, a girl who's, who's got eggs. Like this girl right here. So what we'll do, kind of gently, pull her off of her eggs. Be as careful as we can with the eggs. Jake, you want to grab the eggs? So then we'll grab the eggs out. Now you can see, if you look at those eggs, that real quick so they can see a comparison obviously if you look at those eggs that old song from when we were kids one of these things is not like the other should be playing in your head right now obviously that we won't set that up that's that's a, a an infertile egg there's no reason to set that up that's not going to hatch um, sometimes they look like this uh, sometimes they'll be just a hard yellow uh, mass that's basically egg yolk uh, but that's a bad egg. We won't set that up. Now, any egg that's borderline, we will always err on the side of the egg. So this one we know for a fact is just not uh, not good. So what we'll do is take this and feed this to some monitors um, because they'll love this. It's like a little, little treat for them. Uh, but these eggs are all good. So Jacob's going to go, and what he's going to do right now is take them over and wash them uh, just to get some of the, the excess debris off and then let them air dry. So we'll bring them over and you can see what he's doing here. Uh, this is just clean water. Um, all, all he's doing right now is just scraping off any excess uh, debris that may be on the eggs. Um, you don't have to go too nuts. You don't want to scrub on them too hard to where you damage the shell. But again, he's just trying to, to get these guys um, cleaned up as good as he can, basically. Um, again, don't be too rough with the eggs. You don't, you don't want to scrape on them too hard. You don't want to lacerate the, uh, the egg shell. Um, we don't worry about separating the eggs. Um, if they're stuck together, they're adhered together, we'll leave them together. Sometimes they'll come apart uh, during this process. But for the most part, we, uh, we try and leave the eggs together as, as they've been laid.
once uh, once Jacob gets him out of the out of the wash, we'll let him air dry right here. He'll go get some more clutches um, and fill up the uh, the rest of this tray, and then we'll continue the process. So what Richard's filming right here, this is when I referred to earlier borderline clutches and airing on the side of the egg. This is what I would refer to. So there's a good, this one may hatch, that one may hatch, that one most likely won't, but these are what we would refer to as borderline eggs. If you come over here and you see, if you compare these eggs to these clutches, you can see that, that these eggs are again really borderline um, but at the end of the day we're going to do what we can to set them up and, and give them the best shot to hatch that we can so Jacob is going to come over and he'll uh, he'll go ahead and wash these and set them up just like we would uh, eggs that we know for sure are uh, are good quality eggs and again it's just a matter of um, a lot of people may just throw those eggs away and consider them to be bad and not worth setting up for us, we have we uh, we have enough incubation space in our rooms, um, and it's just the right thing to do to try and give the egg every chance we can to hatch. And and a lot of times these eggs that look weird and, and lumpy and just odd, a lot of times they hatch out. And uh, it's not fair to that animal to just not um, not give it the chance. So we're just going to give it a chance and see what happens. Yep. Okay. So. We've given these eggs a chance to air dry, uh, and then what we'll do now is we'll take them to the next step. We're going to move this tray over, and we're going to submerge the eggs the best we can. Uh, they'll sit in here for 10 minutes. Jacob sets a timer, and they're ready to go. So basically, we'll make sure that we get as much coverage on the eggs as we possibly can. It's not hurting them to get them submerged. I know everybody's going to freak out right now and say, I've got eggs and my snake laid them in the water bowl and, and they died. And well, yeah, if, if they're laid in the, if they're laid in the, the water bowl and you don't catch it right away, then yeah, the egg's going to drown. But in this case, it's a very controlled time limit. They're set here for 10 minutes. Um, and uh, um, we found that there's no negative, uh, no negative effect on the hatch rate. We've been doing this We've been experimenting with this for well over a year now, um, and we've had absolutely no significant movement one way or the other uh, in hatch rate. So this is the, this system has had no effect negatively on our hatch rate. Again, if you look at this clutch, you see we've got three good eggs, and then we've got that one slug. So those of you that were asking what a, what a bad egg looks like, again, here's a really good example. So you've got your three good eggs, one bad slug. All right, so these guys have been in here for 10 minutes. Uh, we're gonna, they're in the bleach solution for 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pull them out now. Let them drip off a little bit here, kind of pat it off. And then we're gonna move them right over here to a clean water pan. We're going to let them sit in the clean water pan. We're going to try and get as much of the bleach off of them as we can. Rinse them off real well. Make sure they're, they're agitated Oops, a little bit so we can get all the bleach off. Okay. That's pretty much it for the rinse. And then they're just going to come get lifted out. And then they're going to sit over here. They're going to air dry. Uh, for a few minutes before they go to the final stage. All right, so our bleached eggs have air dried at this point, and we're gonna move, move them over to, uh, to the next step, which is taking them and soaking them in Bacquasil. This is the final step. Same, it's just the same as, as if we were soaking them in the bleach, we're soaking them in the Bacquasil solution. 
and we'll leave them there for 10 minutes. While we're doing that, while these guys are soaking, Jacob's going to take this next set out. He's going to rinse them off and let those air dry. So, these guys have been in the Bacquasil now for um, a solid 10 minutes. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pull these out. Let them drip off a little bit here. We're going to set these guys over here and they're going to air dry. So they'll sit there as long as it takes them to air dry. And then this group here, we're going to go ahead and now they've been bleached. They've been rinsed, and now they're going to go into their 10-minute box and still bath. Again, same process, just repeating it over and over again. Just getting these guys deep into the box and still. So we're going to let these air dry. As soon as they air dry, we'll come back and show you how we set up uh, a clutch of eggs. So our eggs have now air dried. Uh, what we'll do is we've got our incubation box right here. We'll take our clutch very carefully bring it over. We're going to set it on a paper towel, gently press down. All we're doing with this is trying to get some of the excess moisture off the bottom of the eggs. You can see there's there's some extra, extra uh, moisture there. Bottom of the eggs are this point fairly dry. He says before he shows you all he was wrong. So then we put them in there. Okay. So now they're in their ink box. What we'll also do is take some Gorilla Nuts and we'll put them on this grate. See kind of like that. These are just regular wire nuts. The reason we're doing that is if for some reason the box were to be jostled around or shaken or anything like that uh, we're keeping the eggs from from moving around too much okay we will also go and occasionally do a uh, a preemptive very light very light spray of tenactin it's just a, an antifungal spray uh, we just do that with just a real light coat not you saw that that was a real quick spritz wasn't anything very heavy. Uh, that's just to help keep the eggs from molding. Uh, we, we've done that for years. Uh, this isn't something that we've had to do because of the egg washing. It's just something we've done for years. We'll go ahead and get some of that excess tenactin fog out of there. Go ahead and close this up and you can see, so this is ready to go in the incubator. We've got all of our data information on the egg sheet and we're ready to take her to the incubator, so we'll come this way with it. Follow me. Right through here. Uh, she goes in this incubator. This one's actually kind of cool too. So we're filling this incubator up. This is our second incubator room. We'll bring her, bring this box right in here, and move it over, slide it in, Bing, bang, your aunt, your uncle, we're done. Um, these guys will stay in here until they uh, until they pip and hatch and, and we're ready to go. So that's the, uh, that's the way we set up our ball python eggs. Now you guys have all of the, the gourmet rodent inside secrets, for whatever that's worth. You have, uh, you have the way that, uh, that we uh, pull our eggs, the way we set our eggs up, the way we collect our data, the way we wash our eggs. Um, any other questions, just give us a holler. Uh, hit us up on Facebook or on our website, and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions for you if we can help you out. All right? Thanks a lot for watching TGR Nation, and we'll talk to you soon.